everybody! Welcome back to Virtual Storytime with Miss Laura. Uh, today we are celebrating Bad Appreciation Day, and this story time is another collaboration um, that Patagonia Library has done with Borderlands Restoration Network. And the story that I'm going to read to you today is called Stella Luna by Janelle Cannon. Now this story is a little bit longer, so I really don't have time to do a song and read the story. So hopefully that will be okay and you'll enjoy the book as much as I do. So, ah, Stella Luna. <laughs> In a warm and sultry forest far, far away, there once lived a mother fruit bat and her new baby. Oh, how mother bat loved her soft, tiny baby. I'll name you Stella Luna, she crooned. Each night, mother bat would carry Stella Luna clutched to her breast as she flew out to search for food. And there's... And you can see Stella Luna is there right on her chest. One night, as Mother Bat followed the heavy scent of ripe fruit, an owl spied her. On silent wings, the powerful birds swooped down upon the bats. Dodging and shrieking, Mother Bat tried to escape, but the owl struck again and again, knocking Stella Luna into the air. Her baby wings were as limp and useless as wet paper. Down, down she went, faster and faster into the forest below. The dark leafy tangle of branches caught Stella Luna as she fell. One twig was small enough for Stella Luna's tiny feet. Wrapping her wings about her, she clutched the thin branch trembling with cold and fear. Mother, Stella Luna squeaked, where are you? By daybreak, the baby bat could hold on no longer. Down, down, again she dropped. Oh, and there she is, she looks so scared. Flump! Stella Luna landed headfirst in a soft, downy nest startling the three baby birds who lived there. Stella Luna quickly clambered from the nest and hung out of sight below it. She listened to the bab babble of the three birds. What was that? cried Flap. I don't know, but it's hanging by its feet, chirped Flitter. Shh, here comes Mama, hissed Pip. They're awfully cute and probably not expecting a bat in their nest. Many, many times that day, Mama Bird flew away, always returning with food for her babies. Stella Luna was terribly hungry, but not for the crawly things Mama Bird brought. Finally, though, the little bat could bear it no longer. She climbed into the nest, closed her eyes, and opened her mouth. Plop! In dropped a big green grasshopper. Mama Bird's feeding her. I don't know that she'll like it though. Stella Luna learned to be like the birds. She stayed awake all day and slept at night. She ate bugs even though they tasted awful. Her bat ways were quickly disappearing. Except for one thing. Stella Luna still liked to sleep hanging by her feet. Once, when Mama was away, the curious baby birds decided to try it too. When Mama Bird came home, she saw eight tiny feet gripping the edge of the nest. Eek! she cried. Get back up here this instant! You're going to fall and break your necks! And she was so surprised, she even dropped her worm. The birds clamored back into the nest, but Mama Bird stopped Stella Luna. You are teaching my children to do bad things. I will not let you back into this nest until you promise to obey all the rules of this house. Stella Luna promised. She ate bugs without making faces. She slept in the nest at night. 
and she didn't hang by her feet. Stella Luna behaved as a good bird should. But Stella Luna isn't a bird. Look at her worried little face on the edge of that nest. All the babies grew quickly. Soon the nest became crowded. Mama Bird told them it was time to learn to fly. One by one, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna jumped from the nest. Their wings worked! I'm just like them, thought Stella Luna. I can fly too. Pip, Flitter, and Flap landed gracefully on a branch. Stella Luna tried to do the same. Whoa! But she's got different, a different uh, body from regular birds. I shouldn't say regular birds, bats aren't birds. They just happen to fly. How embarrassing! Oh, look at her trying to grip onto that branch. She looks so silly, but she's just trying her hardest. She can't help it. I will fly all day, Stella Luna told herself. Then no one will see how clumsy I am. Oh, look, she finally got it. The next day, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna went flying far from home. They flew for hours, exercising their new wings. The sun is setting, warned Flitter. We better go home or we'll get lost in the dark, said Flap. But Stella Luna had flown far ahead and was nowhere to be seen. The three anxious birds went home without her. And it's funny, I think my bird, Ringo, is listening in on the story and has some things that he has to say. Well, excuse me, I don't normally allow people to talk during my story times, Ringo. But he's just a bird. He probably doesn't get it. Nor does the rooster outside. All alone, Stella Luna flew and flew until her wings ached and she dropped into a tree. I promise not to hang by my feet, Stella Luna sighed. So she hung by her thumbs and soon fell asleep. She didn't hear the soft sound of wings coming near. Hey, a loud voice said, why are you hanging upside down? Stella Luna's eyes opened wide. She saw a most peculiar face. I'm not upside down, you are, Stella Luna said. Ah, but you're a bat. Bats hang by their feet. You are hanging by your thumbs, so that makes you upside down, the creature said. I'm a bat. I am hanging by my feet. That makes me right side up. Stella Luna was confused. Mama Bird told me I was upside down. She said I was wrong. Wrong for a bird, maybe, but not for a bat. Mm. Whenever I hold the book up, I yawn behind it. <laughs> I don't know why. Every time. More bats gathered around to see the strange young bat who behaved like a bird. Stella Luna told them her story. You ate b b bugs stuttered one. You slept at night? gasped another. How very strange, they all murmured. Wait, wait, let me look at this child. A bat pushed through the crowd. An owl attacked you, she asked. Sniffing Stella Luna's fur, she whispered, you are Stella Luna. You are my baby. <gasps> Mama Bat found Stella Luna. You escaped the owl, cried Stella Luna. You survived? Yes, said Mother Bat as she wrapped her wings around Stella Luna. Come with me and I'll show you where to find the most delicious fruit. You'll never have to eat another bug as long as you live. But it's nighttime, Stella Luna squeaked. We can't fly in the dark or we will crash into trees. We're bats, said Mother Bat. We can see in darkness. 
come with us. Stella Luna was afraid, but she let go of the tree and dropped into the deep blue sky. Stella Luna could see. She felt as though rays of light shone from her eyes. She was able to see everything in her path. Wow. And probably echolocation, all sorts of fun things that bats can do. Soon the bats found a mango tree and Stella Luna ate as much of the fruit as she could hold. I'll never eat another bug as long as I live, cheered Stella Luna as she stuffed herself full. I must tell Pip, Flitter, and Flap. Oops. Mmm, that mango sure does look tasty. The next day, Stella Luna went to visit the birds. Come with me and meet my bat family, said Stella Luna. Okay, let's go, agreed Pip. They hang by their feet and they fly at night and they eat the best food in the world, Stella Luna explained to the birds on the way. As the birds flew among the bats, Flap said, I feel upside down here. So the birds hung by their feet. Wait until dark, Stella Luna said excitedly. We will fly at night. There they are, all hanging upside down. When night came, Stella Luna flew away. Pip, Flitter, and Flap leapt from the tree to follow her. I can't see a thing, yelled Pip. Neither can I, howled Flitter. I shrieked Flap. They're going to crash, gasped Stella Luna. I must rescue them. Stella Luna swooped about, grabbing her friends in the air. She lifted them to a tree, and the birds grasped a branch. Stella Luna hung from the limb above them. There she is, she's grabbed them. We're safe, said Stella Luna. Then she sighed. I wish you could see in the dark too. We wish you could land on your feet, Flitter replied. Pip and Flap nodded. They perched in silence for a long time. How can we be so different and feel so much alike, mused Flitter. And how can we feel so different and be so much alike, wondered Pip. I think this is quite a mystery, Flap chirped. I agree, said Stella Luna, but we're friends and that's a fact. It's very cute. The end. Now at the very end of the book, there's all sorts of um, there's all sorts of notes about fruit bats, um, and all sorts of fun information about them. But I'm not going to read all that today. I hope you enjoyed our batty story times as much as I enjoyed giving them. Uh, please keep tuning in to virtual story time, and um, I hope to see you next week. Bye.